Hi everybody, I'm Bright Garlic and welcome to the third episode of the Alienology 101 video series. And today I'd like to talk to you about the ideas of interscalar and intrascalar. These are some concepts or ideas that I've been developing for some time now to try and make sense of the cosmos and reality and in particular a definition of life if you like understanding what life is and I think that these concepts these ideas although they're not reality and I don't think any of us can really say what reality is they're ideas that might be particularly useful to us trying to conceive of reality and understand reality which is much much bigger than the reality of our planet earth so what do i mean when i talk about interscalar and intrascalar when i talk about the idea of interscalar what I'm saying is that there are scales of being, scales of matter, if you like. And to be interscalar is to move across scales of matter. So, for example, we know that, that matter exists from the, the tiniest thing and that there is the search for the God particle, which incidentally I think is absolutely crazy because we're not going to find one. And we know that matter goes all the way up to encompass our entire cosmos. So we might think of the entire cosmos as a, uh, you know, a body of matter, if you like. So those are the extremes of the scales. And so if something is interscalar, it may encompass many different scales. So for example, the cosmos is the biggest interscalar um, object that we know of, and it encompasses all scales. If you look at uh, an atom, an atom encompasses a much smaller range of scales and that includes subatomic particles and um, smaller subatomic particles and energy forms that bind those particles. It includes many different smaller parts. If you look at a human being uh, a human being, um, as far as we can tell, if we just consider the three-dimensional aspects of a human being, you know, we exist from the smallest subatomic particles all the way up to roughly something that is about six foot tall, give or take a couple of feet, uh, and about, you know, two foot wide. That's the kind of um, scale that we exist on. And so for a human being, we tend to interact with other beings on similar scales. We interact with animals that are on similar scales, though we are aware of um, much bigger animals like whales who seem to be on another scale of size and we're aware of microorganisms that seem to be on a much smaller scale than us and we're aware of uh, insects which are on a smaller scale than us as well and so we interact with these different scales but for the most part we would say that we exist within a certain um, uh, a certain scalar range, if you like, a certain um, size range. We would also recognize that uh, we live on a planet which is much bigger than each of us individually and that there is a sun which is much bigger than our planet and a solar system and a galaxy and universe all the way up to everything. And so we recognize these other scales. 
But it might be that there are entities um, that exist in the universe that just as we uh, we seem to embrace the scales from you know the smallest known pieces of matter all the way up to something that's roughly my size there may be other entities that exist on a much wider scale and of course entities that exist on a much smaller scale so there might be entities for example um, and once again th this gets very fuzzy because we may have energetic kinds of entities that exist in space but we wouldn't recognize them um, there may be energetic entities that, that are like nebula that are nebulous in form and, and very much like a nebula they, they spawn other life forms within them and they are a kind of uh, living entity with an intelligence or there may be um, phys much physically much larger um, entities than anything we've ever seen before and of course these would stretch across those scales I think the, th the, the real challenge that we face here is uh, is our own perception we recognize life from one scale to another and we recognize life within certain definitions and outside of that we're going to be stuck even talking about it it's easy to get stuck but to imagine, for example, um, now I'm not saying this is true, but I'm saying it's possible. It's our definition that is limited. People talk about Gaia, and uh, okay, James Lovelock was the one who gave rebirth to, to the notion of Gaia and, and really brought it into the modern age. And people all around the world have glorified the idea of Gaia, and I'm not really an adherent to the idea of Gaia. You know, I see Earth as, uh, as a mother and a father and, and also without gender. Um, but let, let's, let's move past that label and let's say, what if the Earth is a living organism? The entire Earth is a living organism. Then it may be reasonable to assume that there are other planets that... Um, are living organisms although we might ask are they in fact living organisms or deceased organisms there may be planets who no longer have a molten core who do not appear to have um, any dynamic processes we might say these are, are dead organisms and other planets very much like earth or with uh, molten core and other visible processes these may well be living organisms we might say that every sun is some kind of living organism and with life is consciousness so these organisms are not only alive they're conscious and so if we to expand that scale out we might say well you know maybe a whole galaxy is conscious and keep going the whole universe and the whole cosmos is one living organism and perhaps the whole cosmos is really only God anyway and God which is all is a living intelligence that's not unreasonable for us to speculate on and I think it's more likely to be true than untrue I think you can see using those examples, particularly if you take a planet, a planet's a nice concrete example, that it is possible that life can exist on many different scales. And I would say that that is an interscalar organism. And there's different ways to use this term, interscalar. We, we can describe an organism, we can describe a kind of travel. Um, a kind of communication so it may be that there are interscalar entities that are somehow able to um, move down to a different scale or up to a different scale and communicate with beings who are on that similar scale or to travel to a different scale and communicate with beings who are on that scale um, 
very simple example, maybe not true, but a simple example. Some people believe that Jesus was God incarnate. So if you use my earlier definition that God is the all, then God has come from this, the larger scale there is down to a very small scale and manifested as a human being. Um, we could use lots of examples to describe that. So that's interscalar. So the idea of intrascalar is very simple. Um, it is the existence of something within a particular scale. Now, it's very difficult to define within a scale. You know, you could say it's uh, minus 10 to the 27 Planck lengths, one scale, or, you know, all within a centimeter or everything that exists within you know one meter to three meters it's it's all relative and um, it depends who is trying to understand this idea as a human being who's playing with this idea I would say that I exist on the same scale as almost every other animal on the planet. I would go so far as to say that I'm on the same scale as nearly every mammal. But I think it would probably be more accurate to say that I'm on the same scale as every primate. I just went to a zoo today and I saw a primate that's that big. <laughs> the little, little one. Uh, the adults were that big. So maybe that's not even true, but I think we can generalize and say that um, there are s scale ranges and we could say that certain beings exist within that scale. Um, there might be a whole range of subatomic entities, for example, and um, there might be billions of microscopic life forms that are from so many nanometers to a, another range, so, uh, another point, you know, very small range by our standards, very large by their standards. So there are microscopic life forms and there are what we would recognize as macroscopic life forms. But it could be that these life forms also exist on much bigger scale. So the example that I, I used earlier, let's say there is some kind of uh, uh, nebulous life form that encompasses um, large tracts of space and uh, well let's say it is a nebula rather than just a nebulous life form, let's be a bit more specific. There are uh, nebulas that are um, that are birthing star systems and other celestial bodies we don't yet know about. Let's say that that is um, that is one living organism. So there may be other nebulas and they might be approximately the same size or within a given range. So you can see even taking a planetary example, um, let's say many planets are on a similar scale you can see that that within a certain um, uh, range of size parameters there is roughly organisms that that exist on that scale and so it's quite possible that um, organisms within or life within the same scale can um, communicate within the same scale or move within the same um, scale. So uh, a human being um, is limited at the moment, um, but there are aliens that we know that uh, are not limited and they can move across very large scales if you like. And we in general communicate on a certain scale. There are aliens that communicate on much larger scales. But in general, I think when it comes to intrascalar, um, we 
communicate and connect with things that are roughly on the same size scale. Whereas looking at something that is uh, interscalar, and we are interscalar, but we're on a small interscalar uh, size, size range if you like. But something much bigger, such as a planet, may well be able to communicate and traverse um, much bigger scales. I'm not sure if I've explained this very well. I've, you know, it's an idea I, I've um, been trying to articulate for myself for a long time, and it's, it's probably not a new idea. People talk about it in different ways. But I think the language is important because it can give us a framework for understanding um, uh, aliens and life and where it comes from, how it communicates, how it travels. But if you take human beings, you know, we live on this planet Earth and to some extent we communicate with other species around us, maybe not as we communicate with the, in our own species, but we basically communicate on the same scale. And I expect that there are other entities throughout the universe that communicate on very different scales. So not only do they exist as interscalar beings who can travel intrascalar, um, they can also communicate and travel interscalar. I'll give you a really simple example, though it's not on a big scale. Uh, the tall aliens that I've talked about meeting before who are between 14 and 15 foot tall, at least one version of them, I once saw one bending over to an ant nest. I was uh, communicating with these ants and I, I was close by and I was looking and these ants are about uh, a centimetre in size and a whole bunch of ants came out of the nest as, as you would expect if they were about to attack but they, uh, they didn't attack this visitor instead you could see the little antennas sort of going like mad and there was something happening between the two of them I don't know if the ants were able to um, communicate or, or understand what was being communicated, but it was very clear to me that the larger entity was able to communicate with the smaller entities and able to pick up on their feelings. Um, and I'm, this, this word may not be relevant to us, but somehow it was able to pick up on their thoughts. So there was a kind of um, interscalar communication happening there between something very big and something very small. So that's that concept. This turned out to be a lot longer than um, I want it to be and a lot more painful and difficult to explain than I thought it might be. So uh, feel free to make comment and hopefully this idea, this con these concepts have given you something to think about. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.